So that's a picture of a boat, and it's from history, and it's when the English and the Dutch fought over trade. And that's what APIs remind me of today when you hear open web APIs. Everyone trying to shell each other and kill them. So I have the pleasure and the misfortune of working on a PaaS project. It's a very new thing, and everyone says, the future is all APIs. Give us this platform to integrate them on. And these business people wave their hands and tell me to go find all these magical APIs to integrate into. And so I spend a lot of time looking for them. And I see these charts, and they're like, oh my fucking god. It's like so big. Go find it. Go find it. And everyone's out there trying to sell this API economy. Sam Ramji's raising his hands and singing Kumbaya. And all I've really found that works is, is that APIs are an amazing commerce engine when you're selling to a developer. That fucking rocks, right? Because he's used to consuming an API, and he damn well wants it, right? He doesn't want it in a, you know, any other interface than that. But the problem is, is that Paul Graham, Mr. Flip a Company, um, you know, he comes out and he's like, API is self-serve biz dev, man. Just go with it. Flip your shit. But partnerships are really different. And so I'm sitting at home pissed off. And LinkedIn came out, and they wrote this great speech on systems engineering. And I love this quote at the end, which is that the thing about being a software developer, it's like building a house, but the laws of physics always change. And APIs are the same shit. Because what happens is that it changes really fast. And here's LinkedIn fucking somebody, OK? So look in this third paragraph. And they say, oh, we're so surprised because you laid out a vision that you wanted all of us to build ecosystem value. Anyway, you can read it. They're crying, and LinkedIn killed them. So what does this make me think of? It makes me think of the 1600s when there was a whole bunch of new resources out in this brand new world, and the French invented something called mercantilism. And the idea was is that never, ever, ever give anyone access to raw resources. Only sell them expensive, finished things and keep all the money for yourself. So when anyone talks about the API economy to me, I'm like, hell yeah, it's a great mercantile economy of APIs, which is that screw trade, sell finished goods. Um, and if you ever want to look into it, the, the, the parallels are pretty striking. So here's some more examples of API mercantilism. Here's Twitter, very famous. And just look at this little red line here. They changed one word from build valuable businesses to build valuable tools. You think that changed any business plans out there? People would code into that. And then at the end, they say, if you have a, need something else, come talk to us. Yeah, just use the API. Netflix got on board and said to do some upcoming changes to the Netflix API program. Don't you love it when you read these things in your inbox and you're like, what? <laughs> And they changed some wording to say, you cannot build a commercial business on top of the Netflix API. Whoops. And this is my favorite one, right? So Oracle, this got a couple of tweets yesterday. Um, the funny thing was the people who retweeted also guilty of the same shit, but I won't get into that. Um, Oracle paid $2 billion for Taleo to get into cloud, and Taleo has no public API documentation. Welcome to the API economy. Um, one more for the hopper, which is Bloomberg, that came out with a big fanfare and said, we got this open API. By the way, you can't have access to any of the data. <laughs> but you can look at the API spec. It's open. <laughs> Here's programmable web. Uh, nice little shot of the pathetic state of enterprise APIs. I'm an enterprise guy. I work for VMware. I love platform services and consumer. We do that too. But ultimately, we'd like to get to enterprise platforms. And there's just nothing happening out there. So here's my, here's my takeaway is, is that it's really more people than protocol. And if you think of an API as a protocol like anything else that you normally write to, like x86, you're screwed. And that balance of trade is historically complex outside of reselling. The other problem is you got this little troll called a product manager, OK? And he's got a GUI. And he wants to be a genius and put all of his shit in the GUI, OK? And he's out to screw you. And he's going to have to get to market. And he's going to yank API coverage so he can get the GUI going. So my final advice to you is that true biz dev genius comes from bifurcation. What they're going to do is they're going to send you to their crappy little API where they plan on screwing you. But the real value comes from having a human relationship because it's more people than protocol. And if you look at Twitter, who got embedded deep in the iPhone, they didn't do that through the goddamn app store, OK? They called somebody up, they knew them for months, and they are embedded, they're a feature of the iPhone now. And that's not through an API. And that's not good. I don't like APIs. I wish there was more. So whenever you hear Paul Graham, Mr. Flip, um, talk to you about this with his 367 retweets, I just say, cool story, bro. And I think of the mercantile age when I'm trying to place myself in history. And I think this is very early on. We're being very greedy about balance of trade. And we don't want to give people access to low-level raw resources. Thanks.